public for the purpose of conducting the school district's business and is not to be considered as a community meeting. There are two opportunities for public participation during the meeting and comments are limited to three minutes per individual. The board will listen to comments but may not respond during the meeting. If you wish to address the board, please submit a comment card immediately. Roll call, Charles Hicks, board president. Michael Poole, vice president. Felicia Rice, board treasurer. Betty Robinson. Yolanda Charles, trustee. And Daryl B. Joyce, trustee. Dr. Jennifer Green, superintendent. And to my left taking minutes is Mrs. Laura Norris. If we could please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please take your seats. So board matters. Well, first, I want to say congratulations to the recent graduates of Southfield A&T and University High School Academy. Um, just some highlights, 92% um, of the graduating class are moving on to some form of higher education, and the University High School has 100% of their uh, graduating seniors going on to higher learning. Also, between the two uh, high schools, there was over $31 million acquired and counting. In, and counting in scholarships. So well done, students, and good luck in all your future endeavors. <clears throat> um, I'm not sure if Trustee Robinson or Trustee Rice, uh, they had the pleasure of interviewing um, gr current juniors going <laughs> into seniors to be our next student board representatives. Do you all want to say any words or? Sure. We um, <coughs> interviewed several students, about six of them, and even one was an um, 11th grade student, 10th going to 11. And uh, they all were interviewed very well. And they were very, um, asked a lot of questions about the board. And uh, we are very excited to uh, have them um, <coughs> present to us in September. Very uh, intelligent young people and uh, good public speakers. So um, we're very pleased. Anything, Trustee Rice? Nothing additional. Okay. Mm -hmm. any, any other board matters from any board trustee? Yes. Uh, first off, I think we've had a solid school year. It seems like it just started and here it is June. Um, I want to congratulate uh, those who are transitioning from kindergarten to first grade, fifth, sixth, eighth to nine, <laughs> and of course our high school graduates and the like. Um, there are things for us to really consider when it comes to our comprehensive graduation, um, much of which I've already spoken to the superintendent about and we've probably heard some things here and there in the last week or so. Um, I think what's important though from, a, uh, from our vantage point is that uh, you know, we're, we're able to engage and be exposed to lots of folks in, a, in and around the community. And we know that a lot of it is due to uh, the hoteling and um, conference industry. You know, who can hold how many people and is it a comfortable environment and things like that. And we don't really have a lot of options. Um, of course, there's some that we've talked about in the past, but none of them seem to be just the right fit. And so it, it's just my, my interest to make sure that uh, the community knows that those are conversations that we are having, have had, will continue to have. So I just want to state that. Um, we've had bereavement on the board. We've had welcoming of new, new life on the board. So I, I just wanted to make sure to shout out that. And then um, next week, Wednesday, I believe the date is October the... Not, not October. Did I say October? <laughs> yeah, you did. June. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> uh, June, next Wednesday, the date? 19th. Is the 19th? It's the 19th. Um, please, 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 if you can, uh, register to go to the OCSBA um, end of year dinner. I believe there's two board members who are accepting awards on behalf of MASB, and I know that registration has been kind of, kind of quiet from Southfield Public Schools, so I want to make sure that you know, if you can be there next Wednesday um, in Farmington this time, we, we, we lobbied pretty hard for those people south of uh, M59 to be able to have the banquet a little closer to home. Um, so please don't disappoint by not showing. It's uh, one of those kinds of things. And then anything else can certainly wait. So thank you for, for the floor. Anything else from anyone? Yeah, I had just um, a note on uh, last month. We, uh, Mr. Joyce and I had the opportunity to attend the um, 
Head Start Conference in San Antonio, Texas. And uh, I attended a class taught by a professor from UCLA. And he talked about, his topic was how to deal with angry parents who are raising angry kids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was phenomenal. And it opened my eyes to a lot of things that our teachers are experiencing. And I tell you, I, I pray for you guys every day from what I've heard and what you um, witnessed during your classrooms. And uh, it was just a great program. And he also taught you how to handle those type of parents. And most of them are millennials and some are not millennials. But it was a great, um, great class and I thoroughly enjoyed it. And also that resonated with the uh, meeting I attended last week at Bussey Policy Center. And Ms. Um, Janice Hill had a speaker there from Oakland University. And she too was teaching a free class with parents, telling them how to get their kids prepared for to study, to read, to count, and to get them ready for kindergarten. And um, they had role playing and they had um, uh, two on two meetings and uh, it was phenomenal. And they actually, she actually taught the parents how to handle their kids because just because you deliver a child does not mean you know how to raise a child. You know, it doesn't come with instructions. But um, our kudos to Miss uh, Hill and her staff for bringing the, the lady there from uh, <coughs> Professor for Oakland University. And um, she just gave a wealth of information to the parents. And um, I was impressed as well. And I also announced the, our graduation statistic that Mr. Hicks just uh, echoed. And um, one of the parents said, you know what? I'm glad you said that because uh, I haven't been satisfied with South Public School. But since you said that, I think I'm gonna keep my child in the top of public schools. Mm. So, <laughs> great. Absolutely. Thank you, Trustee Robinson. Anything else from anyone? Hearing none, we're gonna transition into public participation. Again, if you wish to address the board regarding a school-related issue that has not yet been resolved by school administration, please submit a comment card immediately. Comments are limited to three minutes per individual. As a matter of fairness, speakers with complaints against individuals are asked not to mention persons by name, Complaints concerning employees pursuant to board policy 9130 should be brought to the attention of school principals or other administrators before coming to the board. Your cooperation is appreciated. Will Harmon Gunther please come to the podium. Please state your <coughs> name and address please and then proceed. Good evening, board. Good evening. My name is Harmon Gunther. I reside at 19101 Green Spruce in Southfield, right behind MacArthur mm -hmm. Preschool, mm -hmm. what used to be the Bussy Center. Mm -hmm. uh, there are several houses along that stretch from the parking lot, past the sidewalk, and beyond, whose lawn has not been mowed. They had you mowed the center section of it the lawn behind the school itself has not been mowed. It is over City Southfield's code enforcement limits. So therefore, I'm here tonight to ask you for your groundskeepers to continue doing the fine job that they had over the years of mowing the lawns, edging along the fence line, and just keeping the appearances great. Because right now, anybody driving by, seeing that tall grass, would obviously know that the school is abandoned. Even though Southfield does have a new uh, ordinance to uh, <coughs> refurbish schools that are empty, and the Busley Center or the MacArthur is one of those schools. So please you know, continue doing the fine job that you have done over the years, and mow the grass, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I'm both <coughs> president. Yes, ma'am. To respond to the public, but can we provide um, some sort of, um, not explanatory, but some comments on. Um, you can. Okay, uh, uh, Mr. Gunther, yes, and, and to the public. Um, just so you know, um, we, we echo your sentiment. Um, and that we thank you for coming out and, and making us aware. We've had some challenges with our current crew that, that we're remedying at this point. Um, part of the challenge that, that the crew has had is that we've had an, a huge amount of rain. Right. 
And so it made it challenging for them to come out to, to do the lawn properly. Right. Uh, hopefully, um, they're starting to catch up. Over the last couple of days, we've, we've had some good wet weather, mm -hmm. and they've had nine crews out starting to remediate the, the lawn cutting issue that, that you cited. Right. So, so we hope to, you know, but uh, as you also cited, some of the grass had overgrown. And as a result, because of being overgrown, it doesn't look as nice and manicured because they've had to cut out a huge amount of grass. Right. So we hope that they're going to catch up and get it back to the, to the way that you're used to seeing. Okay, thank you very okay. much. So work with us. We apologize for the inconvenience and, and the looks. It's going to get better. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good. Okay, well, and I, and I apologize for saying your first name incorrectly. You said Harmon. You said Harmon. That's correct. Oh, okay, well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have another. Uh, will Quincy Price please come to the podium? Please state your name and your address, sir. Uh, good evening. My name is Quincy Price, address 28400 Lockdale, uh, Southfield, Michigan. Uh, greetings to the board, superintendent, and guests. Uh, I, even though I'm going to use some dates here, this is not going to be a history lesson, but uh, I do remember back in my first year of school in the year 1978, I had a 78-79 school year, a teacher named Ms. Hines at Roosevelt Elementary in Detroit told me the importance of two words, and the same thing my daughter was taught by Ms. Lartigue in her first two years here at Southfield Schools, 06-07, and those two words are thank you. And uh, I would like to extend those to you all. My daughter graduated. Um, 2019, uh, Southfield INT. Uh, she was a top scholar, you know, all that good stuff there. Uh, we got 13 years from you, K through 12. Right. And uh, I greatly appreciate it. I speak very highly of the district. Um, as a parent with a proud graduate, I have a son that's currently in second grade. And just a small token of appreciation, and we can talk more in depth about this later. Um, I would love to be able to give 13 scholarships, but on a uh, mm -hmm. DPS master's plus 30 salary, that ain't quite possible. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> what I can do, <laughs> hey, they left. They know the joke, right? <laughs> but anyway, though, but what I can do, though, uh, just I was just trying to play with the numbers here. And like I said, I talked to the superintendent, the board, and whoever. Uh, what I want to do for K through 5, uh, so my daughter went to Stevenson, Bernie, and Southfield a and I do want to sponsor six students between the grades of K through five at Bernie uh, for picture packages. I want to sponsor three uh, students for the eighth grade trip at Bernie. And uh, I want to pay the senior dues for four students at Southfield ASC next year. Yeah. That's something that I think I can afford. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. of spending my money, so I'm going to spend some of hers. Uh, she did uh, sign to go, to, uh, she's going to go to Oakland. I was really pushing the HBCU because I went to one Arkansas Pine Bluff for my undergrad, but she decided to go to Oakland. Well, Oakland kind of chose her because they were giving the money. But uh, what I am going to instill in her, uh, like I said, I'm going to spend some of her money. What I'm going to ask when she graduates, I'm going to ask that she give a $1,000 scholarship every year when she graduates. So okay. um, it gets a little hard to convince them when they get older. Yeah. But I'm daddy, so hopefully that'll mean a little something. <laughs> so I appreciate it once again. I just wanted to say thank you for 13 great years. Wow. Thank, thank you. you. And I give my time. Well, on, be on behalf of the board, we thank you for your philanthropic Absolutely. efforts, sir. And I will be calling him on tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else want to? We're good. Okay. Well, um, Mr. Michael Grays, please come to the podium. Mm -hmm. Please state there's your a, name and address. There's a three-minute limit, Mr. Gray. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. <Again. laughs> um, good evening, uh, community board members, and Madam Superintendent, and administration and parents and students. Um, I'm Michael Graves. I live at 26375 Halstead, Farmington Hills. But I'm here today to just say a couple of words. Of, I, can't, I can't beat that uh, with a 10-foot pole. That's excellent, sir. 
But I do want to thank you. I had four sons who graduated from out of this uh, district, and all four are doing well. The oldest son, however, is retired already. Retired. Already retired. So they look at me and say, well, what you want? <laughs> um, it has just been an absolute honor working for this district as well. But I wanted to say there was something you did last month, and I wasn't here. You gave an award to an individual by the name of Tanja Shellman. And I just want to say thank you. I, I represent the uh, paraprofessionals. I'm a union president. And uh, many times I come here to these meetings, and I don't have you know, sometimes, but in the last uh, few meetings, it's been excellent. It's, it's better than what it has been. I uh, also wanted to say that I hope you keep that up. Yeah. It brings something to the table that we need in mm -hmm. our society, and that's to recognize everyone. Right. Everyone. everyone. And so I wanted to say that. Mm -hmm. Also, I wanted to say to you that, you know, I started saying how many years. I've been here for 33 years. And I have seen so many changes that I could certainly have an opinion on. And I, most of the time, I do. <laughs> uh, I would say that this is one year that I believe is starting on the right track, and I hope that you can continue. But I say one thing. Please keep that ear to those who work for you and work around you, because we work with students. It has been, you know, I couldn't say the words. And I know time is. It's breaking on me, but I'm going to say this. These students in Southfield Public Schools for the 33 years I've worked with them are some of the best human beings I've ever encountered. Mm -hmm. And those that taught them and worked for them are no different. Yeah. Some of the best human beings right here mm -hmm. in Southfield Public Schools. And I just want to say it's been a pleasure. I am wanting to do an announcement. This will be my last meeting. I am retiring in August of wow. 2019 this year yeah. uh, and it has just been an absolute pleasure working for you and an honor and I say to you all may God be with us all and may we accept him on our journey mm -hmm. take care yeah. Well, Mr. Mr. Graves, we, we thank you for your service, sir. Uh, you were one of the first persons when I, when I decided to run for a board that I spoke to. And you were really direct on where things are and where things need to go. And I appreciate you for that. I appreciate your honesty and your integrity and your hard work, sir. So hope you enjoy whatever you choose to do in your retirement. I also want to piggyback on stuff you said about our students. Um, I was telling some of the trustees earlier on today, um, one of my other jobs um, is to um, lead a, a group of men in a fraternity, and we, we purchased a house. And uh, we needed some services done. And one of our students graduated, who graduated a week ago, he and his crew of his fellow students and started a business. So these are, these are young men who have an entrepreneurial spirit. And they do everything. They, today they cut our grass, they painted our parking lot, they, they even have their own version of AAA where they can get you in and out of your car. <laughs> I bring that up because these young men just really, you know, when you, you hear a lot of people say negative things about our students and, and where are these kids are gonna go, but these group of young men are hardworking, all college bound going students, and whatever they ask me to do, I do because I'd rather support them doing positive things mm -hmm. than going another route. So it makes doing this job worthwhile when you have young men like the ones that we're dealing with in our district and young women as well, just doing great things, positive things. It makes it value added what we do here. So again, just a short side note. Thank you. Anything else from the trustees? I'm not sure if it was discussed at previous meetings, but certainly it was in the sun. And one of our public participants did um, mention this in their comment. Um, but it, it, it was disappointing for me to read in the sun about the city making or you know policy changes. And I wasn't really sure if they had reached out to the district at all. Um, I did a little uh, 
uh, letter to the editor where I didn't use my you know board title but I was just like you know that's not collaborative in my opinion and in my estimation and so I don't know if we've discussed it at the table um, certainly it would be appropriate for a study session just to find out what our rights are um, is this kind of an imminent domain situation type of thing so certainly I didn't want it to be lost good point we'll follow uh, up I'm sorry okay I didn't know um, while we can follow up I did want to share that we were contacted by the um, senior housing to purchase our properties, to consider purchasing our properties and turn, rezoning them. And at that time, I had shared with that entire board um, that we had our buildings being assessed. And then once our final infrastructure assessment comes back, that the trustees will then make a decision and a determination as to what direction we were headed as a district. We were not interested at that time in any way, shape, or form in making a premature decision. Um, I later found out that they did move forward with the zoning um, unbeknownst to us at the time, and I did share with um, Council President our dissatisfaction with that process. Absolutely. Anything else? Here and now, we're going to transition into the report of the superintendent. Thank you, Board President. Um, trustees, good evening to you all. We are here the last week of school and are very excited but slightly saddened to see our children go for the summer. Um, that's, that's the joy that we receive every day going out in the field and working with our young people. So we wish them well and we want them to have a fantastic summer. Um, and I will speak in a moment about preventing the summer slide. But before I do that, I know Mr. Graves acknowledged the phenomenal educators that we have throughout the district and it has been a pleasure this year to acknowledge all educators from across the district those that are in teaching capacity parapro capacity custodial capacity uh, bus driver capacity and the like because it truly takes a village to educate our children so thanks to everyone um, however these two individuals will receive the last awards for this year for a distinguished educator and one was really touching because it came directly from a student and it came from a student who needs a little extra support and oftentimes one we don't want to admit when we need extra support but then to acknowledge a teacher that has made the difference in your life in terms of receiving the support uh, was very um, very heartfelt in the nomination and this was from a student by the name of Abigail we'll leave the last name off and Abigail stated I nominated Mrs. Hubble because she's the type of teacher that helps her students even when she has other classes she is not the type of teacher that would just have us look at a computer all day <laughs> but really shows us what to do when we need help and how we are able to accomplish that she is a great teacher and I am grateful to have had her as my teacher. So please join me in acknowledging Miss Kristen Hubble, who's new to our Southfield family and at Southfield A&T High School. Good evening and thank you so much for all of my students um, who honor me every day. Since I was in first grade, I have always known that I wanted to be a teacher. Helping others learn new things and connect them to improving the quality of their life has always been my purpose. Whether it was teaching a friend how to use revision skills in their writing or how to communicate better with others, or these days my signature move, which is sending inspiring articles to loved ones to prompt deep discussion, <laughs> teaching has always coursed through my veins. Yet, without some notably inspiring people in my life, I wouldn't be able to receive that award. So I have a lot of thank yous to say. Thank you to my mentors, 
who showed me not only imperative pedagogy to maintain effectiveness in my teaching, but also that all the tricks of the trade and classroom management are meaningless without building relational trust in a positive climate, as well as providing me with leadership opportunities and coaching to be successful and forgiving me for my mistakes <coughs> and allowing me to learn from them. For encouraging me to stay out of the staff lounge in a friendly way, but be there for my colleagues and stay true to the mission of educating minds and capturing hearts. And most importantly, instilling in me to always put the Maslows before the Blooms and never give up on those unresponsive ch kids because if you can't teach them today, you can love them. And if you can love them today, you can teach them tomorrow. Thank you to my family and friends who have supported me through every certification, degree, late night work study session, and professional milestone. Especially my loving husband, who has to deal with that garage at the end of every school year. <laughs> and of course, my daughter, for reminding me every morning to treat every student the way I want her to be treated by every adult that she encounters. As my late grandmother always said, you are the company you keep. So thank you to the colleagues that I formed collaborative friendships with throughout the years in schools. And this year, a special shout out to Mona Chambers, Malachi Hampton, Mark Winston, and Mildred Lawhorn for always being amazing and available. Of all the schools I've had a pleasure at working at, I've never felt like I was home until I came to Southfield. So thank you to the supportive administrators at Southfield a and all five of them, and especially the special education administrators who are here tonight, Dr. Freeman and Connie Thompson, for always valuing my opinions, concerns, and knowledge to help our students grow. Thank you to the parents of my students who email me and text me on a regular basis, who are the partner that I need to help our child succeed. We need more parents like you because as you know, teenagers need you just as much now to coach and guide them as they did in their elementary years because they're making some pretty imperative decisions that will affect them for the rest of their life. Most importantly, thank you to my students. You brighten my day. You give me a purpose to go to work each morning. Laugh with me, humble me when I watch you overcome challenges and stigmas that you never thought you could, but you do because you're resilient. Each one of you that I've had the privilege of serving this year has made an impact on my life that I will always cherish. You remind me not to let the politics of education interfere with my purpose and remain grounded and human. You've shown me how important it is for people to know that teenagers are so underrated. Not the typical stereotype of moodiness, angst, and insubordination. Rather young adults who want to see the value and the time they spend in their classrooms and who they spend that time with and how they can apply what they learn in school to real life. You inspire me to make every moment that you are in school meaningful, from academic content to real life talks about everything, including advocacy, self-discipline, and academics. I see you, I know you, and I love you. Thank you. Wow. We see why yeah. Miss uh, <laughs> Tubble was nominated. Well done, well done. I believe you have a student here this evening supporting you and your husband here as well. So if you can just stand up and be acknowledged yeah. for your support this evening. <laughs> and a parent, and a parent. <laughs> we can't do it without you. So thank you for being here this evening. Ironically, the uh, next nominee is also someone from the special education department and was nominated by someone that uh, Mrs. Hubble mentioned in her speech and that person being Malachi Hampton. Um, and this is a little longer and I, I thought that Malachi was the person being nominated but Malachi was actually the person making the nomination. So I did want to acknowledge the fact that I do feel that Malachi Hampton should be nominated by someone in the very near future since the <laughs> superintendent cannot nominate. Um, <laughs> If anyone's feeling the urge to do so, please do. Uh, <laughs> but I, I found this, this nomination um, extremely compelling, and it's about Dr. Thompson. He says, Dr. Thompson came aboard this year as our supervisor. When teachers get a new supervisor, we have a critical eye and are watchful because of the adjustment and change which are inevitably coming. We look to see if our new leader is a supporter or a dictator. After meeting, talking to, and working with Dr. Thompson this year, I have found her to be an excellent leader who supports, <clears throat> empathizes, and does what is right for students. She attends lots of student IEPs and supports 
uh, in support of the process and only helps with her expertise when there. Never has she made us feel like she was there to overwatch. It is always in a leadership and support role. That kind of leadership is why I feel our district is back on the path to excellence. So thank you, Dr. Thompson, for putting us back on the path to excellence. Good evening, everyone. Uh, good evening, board and superintendent. Um, one of the things that Kristen mentioned when she was up here was um, when I interviewed um, with Dr. Freeman and the interview team, um, I, when I interviewed with them, um, it was a great interview. It was a great talk. When I walked out of the door, I felt like I was home. And um, I didn't know if I was going to get the job, but I knew that it was a positive experience, and I knew I had a lot to look forward to with Southfield. Um, at this point, I supervise six schools. Um, I self-filled high school a and Selford Regional, I have Levy, <coughs> um, Adler, and then I have Bussey, and then I have Thompson K-8. Um, this has been um, one of the best professional experiences that I have. Um, although Mr. Hampton nominated me, I could nominate him <laughs> and, um, yeah, and many, many other staff that I've worked with. Um, people here, the staff here, um, central administration, <coughs> other administrators, the students, and the staff have really embraced me. And um, I, I just feel like this has been a really great learning year for me. Um, a learning year, a uh, growth year for me. Um, I've always, as a, I was a former building principal and I've always really pushed my um, staff to have a growth mindset and I really had to have, had, had to have a growth mindset this year. So I'm so thankful for, for that. I thank um, just everyone in, in this room. I thank um, Dr. Freeman. Um, I, I appreciate having been hired. I've asked her like a thousand questions, a thousand and one since I've been here, mm -hmm. but really wanting to do the best for the district. I see where the district is going with the blueprint. I was involved in that um, w when I was in Ypsilanti, and I just see um, from this lens, from a lens not being in central office, but seeing what the board is doing and with the various schools, um, that it's the, the district truly is moving and moving in the right direction. So I'm really thankful to be here. Um, I don't have my family here tonight. Um, my son wasn't able to be here, but he's endured a lot with me um, in education, and he's happy that I'm here in Southfield. Um, he's happy that I've made this change. I feel like I started in special education and this is where I'm supposed to be. I know that there's a lot of work to be done. I know that our kids have so much potential and I've seen it um, starting with the little ones at Bussy all the way through the high school. So um, I, I feel privileged and honored to have the opportunity to help students grow, to, to work with the staff so that they can build their capacity and be the best that they can be so we can really improve student outcomes. So thank you all for the nomination and for the honor of this award. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes our official Distinguished uh, Educators of the Year. However, I must say that there have been several nominations that have come through for those that uh, work on my cabinet, and I refuse to accept any of those. While I agree that they are all phenomenal individuals, I, I wanted to ensure that we were acknowledging those that were out in the field, boots on the ground, every single day. So if my cabinet would just stand up so that I can say thank you, because I do believe that you are Distinguished Educators, however, you are not uh, in the qualifications for receiving that award. So thank you for the service that you have. Thank you. Moving along to the legislative updates, the um, most important thing that I'd like to lift this meeting is that of the um, budget and the House just putting out their 
budget last week on Thursday, I believe, and the changes that are in the House budget are significantly different than what we saw from uh, the governor's proposal to that of the Senate proposal, which will impact um, our funding for next school year, as well as some of the um, supplemental funds that we may get. They are still in the process of um, going back and forth to come up with something that all sides can agree to. However, it is postponing or has prolonged us from developing our budget for next year because the numbers are constantly moving. We have been working on it diligently. Um, Ms. Dankovich and I met for several hours today and I think we, we made some tremendous uh, headway in terms of where we need to go, but again, the um, projections will be just that until we have a finalized state budget. So wanted to keep you aware of where we were in that process. Uh, moving on to the instructional infrastructure, and earlier I mentioned the summer slide. We have our summer packets being posted to our district webpage on Friday of this week, the day that the students are exiting for the summer. I know that last summer we had a delay in getting those uh, packets to all of our stakeholders that will not occur this year. All of them will be electronic and they will be posted on our district webpage. Uh, Christy Poole wanted to add a, oh. a point to the legislature. Sure. Yeah, uh, Dr. Green, I, as you know, I serve on the Government Relations uh, Legislative Committee for the Michigan Association of School Boards. And typically, <clears throat> I get alerts when there's a significant action that we need to take. So this afternoon, just to add to your report on the budget, I got a legislative alert to take action. The House Appropriations Committee is bringing up its proposal for school aid <clears throat> transportation on Wednesday morning in committee. That's tomorrow. Under these proposals, university funding of $500 million will be moved out of the school aid fund, but gasoline would be exempted from sales tax. The result is a, 350, a $325 million cut to school revenue for the budget on top of the $170 million hit that we took last lame duck. These bills would be moved, or would move income tax out of the school aid fund and into roads. I repeat, the lame duck bill that moved income tax revenue out of the school aid fund will be moved into roads. roads. Those two raids, those two raids total over $495 million and it's reported that the same two cents of sales tax paid at the pump would replace, be replaced with a gas tax the following year roughly pulling out another $270 million of additional revenue from the school aid fund. What I've kn known over the last 10 years, I think Trustee Robinson will agree, typically they use the school aid fund to balance the budget. Mm -hmm. And I'm tired of the Michigan legislature balancing their budget on the backs of our children. Mm -hmm. So contact Kyra Bolden as soon as you can. And those of you that are out of the Southfield District in other communities, be sure to contact your Michigan State representative that represents your district because it this affects all of us. For us, if you can't contact them immediately, there is a coffee and conversation with Senator Jeremy Moss and Michigan State Rep Kyra Bolden on Monday, June 17th at the Southfield Public Library. This could be devastating to the school aid fund. And the quality of education that we provide to our students. Do you have a time? 5.30, yeah. Southfield Public Library. Yeah, okay. uh, it's scheduled 5.30 to 7, Monday, June 17th, at the Southfield Public Library. Thank you, Vice President Poole. Uh, it's most unfortunate that that continues to be the way in which we fund uh, various projects throughout, throughout the state. Uh, we are working very closely, we being the superintendents in the state of Michigan, working very closely with the governor to try to help uh, get some things passed in support of the uh, schools and are very grateful that she has uh, attended many of our meetings this, this year. However, um, it takes all parties 
to come to a common understanding and a common agreement to service our young people. Wow, okay. Um, moving back to the instructional infrastructure piece, um, just two more things that I would like to note, and I'm not sure if uh, Treasurer Rice is going to lift them in the subcommittee report, but uh, the team has been working diligently on creating a calendar for next school year, an assessment calendar, and that assessment calendar will include not only the uh, summative assessments, but the formative assessments and the short cycle assessments that the students will be taking next year as well. We will have that posted very shortly on our webpage for our parents to plan ahead. Um, as well as the team has worked very uh, diligently in putting together curriculum guides for next school year. Uh, at the beginning of next school year, there will be a curriculum guide for every grade level throughout our district. And at the secondary level, they will be by content areas, content specific. So thank you to those teams that have worked on those pieces as well. And we have a Head Start report. You want me to do it? Yeah. I wasn't there. Me I, I wasn't prepared to do this. Oh, God. Hold on, get started. Okay, June 3rd, 2019, update. Head Start 128, um, GSRP 6364, early Head Start 16. On the waiting list, uh, Head Start GSRP 75, drop 17, nine Head Starts, eight GSRPs. Average daily attendance, Head Start, 85.6%, GSRP, 89%, Early Head Start, 70.54. Child Adult Care Food Program meals served for the month of May 2019. Head Start, uh, breakfast, 11.50, lunch, 14.04, snack, 11.30. Great Start, breakfast, 6.39, lunch, 7.21, snacks, 6.35. Early Head Start breakfast, 175, a.m. snack, 181, lunch, 179, p.m. snack, 177. Important updates, health. 18 received vision screening at health fair. All dental screeners are up to date. Two needing hearing. Disability, currently there are 21 children with individual education plan, 12 Head Start, nine GSRP. Program goals, 2019 to 2024. Goal number one, education. Increase quality of Head Start services to meet the needs of zero to five years children and families. Goal number two, health. Increase MH outcome for Head Start children, families, and staff to promote health and wellness. Goal number three, family community engagement. Increase family engagement and transitions to maximize preschool gains and support family outcomes. Goal number four, nutrition. Head Start families will increase variety of fresh fruits and vegetables to promote health and wellness. Goal number five, health and safety. Southfield Public Schools will maintain healthy and safe indoor and outdoor environments at all times to provide a safe foundation for children to learn and grow. Self-assessment findings. Program governance slash leadership. The board meeting agenda is brief and does not provide enough information pertaining to action items. URSA, recruitment plans was not specific to the key sites and organizations across the program, across the program service area. Fiscal, current travel policy and procedure for reimbursement do not align to Head Start program performance standards, HSPPS. District uses the same auditing firm to complete audits for all grant programs. <coughs> Monthly financial report was not available for each policy council meeting. Environmental health and safety issues. Safety outlet plugs were missing in some hallway outlets. Exterior of the facility, parking lot and playground had debris and trash on it. Comprehensive services, disabilities, Program was not provided a copy of each child's IEP. Teachers were not aware of the goals identified on each child's EIP. All children were not provided services 
specified on their IEPs. Pull-out services are the only option support staff are using. Documentation not consistent for each child with an IEP. Important information to share. The director, child manage, manager, two male teachers, and a parent attended the Supporting the School Readiness and Success of Young African American Boys Community of Practice Training. Central topic, brain development and school readiness success of African American boys. Busty will continue to come up with strategies to help support the African, African American male. We are looking at potentially having an all boys classroom in the fall of 2019. That ends the bus report. And I thank you. Oh, the financials, I don't have the financials. You have the financials? No. They, I don't have it. We didn't have the financials for this month because it's our understanding that policy council did not meet this month. Okay. Yes. We're in the process of closing out, so we need to reconcile first getting all the in-kind in. Bussy has had a litany of activities going on for the entire month of May, so we want to capture all the in-kind from the admin side, from the program side, clean up the budget, and, and provide you an accurate report. So there are a lot of moving targets going on right now, so we're in the process of reconciling and closing out the five-year grant cycle. Okay? Okay. Thank you. Um, through the chair. So. Interested in knowing the uh, if there have been any reasons for the set for the early head start, and if um, I don't know if it's I'll just say it and then we can follow up later. But um, if if it's still 85 percent for the early head start, that's not something I'm aware of. Um, I'd love if over the next few months we could we could get a, a better idea of the program governance leadership self assessment finding. Um, any any um, suggestions of what perhaps they mean by the the briefness and the you know in terms of action items? Perhaps they're talking about a, um, the policy, policy council board. I'm not sure. Um, it has uh, I put a star by the program governance. Okay. I put a star by this, but I don't I didn't I don't think I meant to. And then um, just the importance, making sure that it's not lost that. Um, we do have to report out that federal money each month um, to just be in compliance, as I understand it. And so I certainly want to make sure if, if, if we can support that in any way, whatever it takes. Okay. Noted. Um, Board President, the only other thing that I would like to add is as we continue along the strategic planning uh, journey, uh, we are hosting a series of focus groups this summer for our parents. They are all listed on our webpage and we will send out reminders throughout the summer for the month of July as well as the month of August. Thank you very much. Thank you. Transitioning to action items. The chair will entertain a motion to open and approve with any corrections consent agenda. I, I move we open and approve the consent agenda. Support been properly moved and seconded to accept the consent agenda. Any discussion? Hearing none, I'm not sure who's calling for the vote. I think Ms. Rice. Treasurer Rice, if you could please call for the vote, please. Motion and second by. It was motioned by Trustee Charles and, and supported by Trustee Joyce. Trustee Poole? Yes. Trustee Robinson? Yes. Myself? Yes. Trustee Joyce? Yes. Trustee Charles? Yes. Board President? Yes. Yes. Unanimous. Thank you. The Chair will entertain a motion to open and approve Report 57129 Personnel Report. I move we open and approve 57129 Personnel Report. Support. It's been properly moved and seconded to accept the personnel report. Any questions or discussion? Hearing none, Treasurer Rice, if you could please call for the vote. Trustee Charles? Yes. Trustee Joyce? Yes. 
Trustee Hicks? Yes. Trustee Poole? Yes. Myself? Yes. Trustee Robinson? I mean, it's in your first section. Page 20. Okay. Page, uh, 20. Unanimous. Thank you. Chair, entertain a motion to open and approve report 57 139 KCE Champions LLC contract. I move we open and approve report 57 139 the KCE Champions LLC contract for 19 through 2021. Support. Support. It's been it properly moved and second. And seconded it again. Uh, report 57-139 KCE Champions LLC contract 2019 through 2021. Any discussion? Hearing none, Treasurer Rice, please call for the vote. Trustee Poole? Yes. Trustee Robinson? Yes. Myself? Yes. Trustee Charles? Yes. Trustee Joyce? Yes. Trustee Hicks? Yes. Six. Unanimous. Thank you. Transitioning over into informational items, report 57131 Technology Purchase CloudLink Renewal. So this evening we have uh, a familiar face, Mr. Wes Prescott, and as Vice President Poole stated, every time he sees Wes, he knows that we need money. So, Wes is once again here to ask for that. This one's not that much, and it's in the budget. Um, so, Report 131, first of all, good evening. Um, report 131 uh, is for a uh, service called CloudLink. Um, it allows us to uh, deliver voicemails left on the phone to email. Uh, it's a service that we've had for three or four years now. Um, in order for us to continue to be able to utilize that service, we need to renew it. Any questions from the trustees on this item? You said it allows voicemail to be transmit, transferred to emails? Delivered to email, yes. Delivered to email. Yep. Okay. Yep. Does, does it also uh, track the response time? No. Mm. No. I'm sorry, Treasurer Rice, you had a question? Yep. Just um, do we have a high utilization rate? Um, yes. You know, one of the, we do? So it essentially uh, covers those of us that are out in the field and when the uh, calls come into the offices, they go directly to our email. When it, when it stops working for a brief period of time, we get a lot of calls. We get a lot of calls. Since you're at the podium, sir, if you don't mind tackling the next couple. Uh, report 57132. Well, before we do. Oh, I'm Because you're right, this is for information and thankfully because um, Oh, I thought that said seven million. No, no, <laughs> seven thousand. Okay, yeah, we can move on. If, if it was seven, oh, no. if it was seven million, we would not be sitting here. I was like, here. voicemail, seven million. You would, you would be using your phone for voicemail. Seven thousand. So just, just being, just for the trustees' clarity. Every year we seem to have these renewals at this time of the school year. So at some point, I may be asking after we go through and ask your questions, if you feel comfortable to make these informational items, action items, to approve them to move on. But think about that. Thank if you oppose it, I'm cool. But let's let them go through what the things are at a high level. Yeah, that's right. So report one, I'm sorry, report 57-132, technology purchase, IP slash PA clocks. Yep. So. Uh, Earlier in, earlier in the school year, uh, Mr. Toko and uh, Steve Melcher applied for a uh, Michigan State Police Grant. Um, that grant allows uh, security enhancements throughout the buildings. And one of the things that they had asked for um, was a expansion of the PA and clock system to include uh, O House at Southfield A&T. Um, it currently has some IP clocks and speakers, but they're just in the hallways. Um, the announcements do play over the, the classroom phones, but there's a lot of issues with um, not being able to hear announcements uh, reliably. 
depending on the volume of the phone. Sometimes the volume gets turned down and you can't hear announcements. Um, so part of that grant was to put a speaker uh, mounted on the wall at every classroom uh, in O House that doesn't currently have one. So we went out, uh, went through the RFP process. We received five bids. Um, we interviewed the two lowest bidders. Um, the, the bid that happened to be the lowest um, was Bayview Technology. Um, his son actually attends Southfield a and um, And we did have confidence that uh, that vendor would be able to complete the project um, on time and as expected. Are these announcements made during instruction time? I hope not. They're, they're more emergency notifications. OK. And so who, who monitors that, the timing of them? Uh, that would the be the, the building administrator. Mm -hmm. OK. Or building administration. Okay. Any other questions from trustees? Yes, or President. Yes, ma'am. And I might have missed this. Do we know how many classrooms this will cover? Uh, there's approximately 40 that, curr no that currently don't have uh, a clock or PA system. And the others have them and they're operable? Yes. Okay. Yep. Our goal, our goal was to put one in every classroom that didn't currently have some way to hear announcements and bells. Okay. Uh, yes, Superintendent? Um, you may recall uh, several years ago when uh, University High School Academy was housed in the old house wing, the system was divided at that time, which prevents now the ability to communicate to the entire school. So that's one of the reasons why we're seeking to have this new system installed to communicate throughout the entire building. Tracy Charles, do you have a question? No. Any other questions? Okay. I don't think we the next one is yours. The next one is not mine. I mean, do we have any other ones for us? What's we do not. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> not, not today, right? <laughs> Short list today. That's Thank funny. you, sir. That's Thank funny. You. Okay, report 57, open report 57-133, budget revision for EHS to build a playground or playground structure. Yes, Board President, um, this is something that we brought before you in the past. However, we had to do some budget revisions with the uh, early Head Start piece, and we are now seeking your approval um, to build an additional playground set. Um, I believe that when we had this one, uh, assessed in the past it was too close to the fence is that what the report mm -hmm. it was something technical that had to do with this specific one and so we had to go back good evening, good evening. Um, we did not actually have a playground structure for our early head start children the, babies. the current one we have now is not um, age appropriate for the babies it's for three to five year olds so they require them to have gross motor um, time and so we were wondering if we could do a budget revision so we can build a playground for our infants and toddlers. Is that inside? Or outside? It's outside. It'll be outside. Yes, yes outside. Yes, ma'am. Hmm. They'll have little mats uh, um, for question. tummy time, <laughs> okay. and they'll have a covering, and then they'll have a lot of climbing things and push toys and mm -hmm. a little small slide and very things small. like that. Very small. Very very small. Now is this? In your current budget, are you revising this your budget to include this? We want to revise our budget, okay. our current amendment. budget. Okay. Meaning that we'll be shifting some funds from somewhere else. Not yes, ma'am. Um, if you remember, we were supposed to start in October, but because of the lower clearances, we were not able to do that. So we want to revise this budget because understand we are at the end of our five-year grant cycle, mm -hmm. and we'll have a new grant number, so we cannot carry over any money and we can't ask for any more revisions so that money will be left on the table and we don't want to send it back so you ever had the money there you, you just need to spend the money that you have so yes ma'am okay. yes ma'am all right okay. so now, Hill, i'm sorry go ahead Trust those um who, who attended this oh you weren't there did, did she present you with the uh, information that we received from um the head start conference in san antonio all the new um play equipment and what have you did you uh talk to miss ferris about that we did Okay. Yes. Vintage, I, yes, I'm sorry. Yes, I did. Um, however, what I did is I also reached out to Kaplan because Kaplan specializes yeah. in the infant and toddler equipment that will be approved um, by the Office of Head Start. So we did look at that equipment as well. And Ka Kaplan also is, one, is a very good vendor who specializes in infant and toddler equipment. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. 
So there's no issue or concern with the purchase of the equipment. My question would be, since you're doing an amendment, does it require any additional cleaning or maintenance to maintain the new structure? Because you mentioned something about mats for the, for the tummies and right. so if children been on the floor, is there anything additional that you all have to do to maintain that? We will carry the mats out with us okay. and we'll bring them back in and we'll sanitize, um, you know, with the three part solution as we would do with any equipment. Gotcha. Okay. Yes, sir. Board President. Yes, um, As mentioned in the self assessment, you did uh, hear Trustee Robinson mention that uh, we are mindful of what our outdoors looks like and the debris that has been out there. So that is something that we will be monitoring um, very closely to ensure that there's nothing out there for our very young children. And we do a playground inspection. We're required by the state of Michigan. So we do a playground inspection. And the custodials, custodians go out and remove trash, but we ourselves go out and check the equipment. Okay. Any other questions or discussion? Thank you, Ms. Hill. And the um, next item ah. is actually Head Start as well. Okay, <laughs> so we're gonna open report 57-135, carryover funds from budget period 2017-2018. Yes, sir. So we had um, a conversation with Mr. Edward Young, our program specialist, and his supervisor, Guadalupe, because we were looking at how we could utilize the carryover funds from 2017-18, and they told us to request that carryover to help kind of offset the cost of the roof. So we, we had a conversation. We have prepared that and we've submitted it in HSES. We just need the approval from the board and for that. Okay. Any questions or comments? Okay. That would be one that I would be um, happy to see moved forward today because yes. I'm, I'm sure it's time sensitive. Mm -hmm. I would echo the same sentiment for both. Both what 135 and 136? Uh -huh. 133 and 135. Is this included in this? Okay. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Miss Hill, I'm a little bit confused. <clears throat> you say we have carryover $174,000. Then why are we asking for $6,000 for um, on, um, to build a playground structure? Would, wouldn't you be able to get this money from the, um, from the carryover? If we use the money from the carryover, we have to deduct that from the roof, okay. the total roof. And it was not during, at that time, the carryover, we didn't have early Head Start. So okay. it wouldn't be recommended to do that. They recommended that we do a budget revision. Okay. And the 6,000 is because that's for equipment itself. We can look at our budget to kind of offset the cost of installation, which would probably be an additional $4,000. Okay, so this 174,000 carrier will cover the entire roof. It will not cover the entire roof. The, it will help supplement some of the cost of it, the roof, it, it so also, that it wouldn't be because the district, the district, it's, it was it was charged to the general fund. We would be able to request 174,000 dollars carryover that could kind of help offset that a little bit. It, it'll reduce our expenses from general fund okay. Mm -hmm. okay. using these using, utilizing these funds. So this is a thank you. It's a thank you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I thought I thought you couldn't I'm confused. I thought you couldn't mix general fund and grant fund money. Uh, well, it's, it's, I mean, not, when it's, this not, it's not a mix. So what it what it is is just using a portion of the grant fund and then another portion. So it's not mixing funds because they're not being consolidated together. They're they're but they're restricted funds. Yeah. Independently. Right. It's just that we're going to use those funds before we use general funds to reduce our strain on the general fund. It's not a mixture. And also, it's, it's not supplanting. If I may, yeah. no, and if it's, it's the 17, 18 it, year? Yes. yes. Yeah. And anytime it's health and safety that's going to impact yes. children, yeah. then Head Start, nine cases out of 10, is going to approve that. <coughs> so it's 17, 18 carryover, and then 2019's budget for the 6,000 to just put it in a different line item as opposed to whatever line item was in. It's 17, 18 January gone. This is 19, 20 now. Correct. Exactly. 17, 18 has gone already, but we can request that carryover money because we're not into the 19, 20. We're still in our, 
you, you have a five-year grant cycle. Right. We're still in the five-year grant cycle. If we had waited, and if we wait until after June 30th, then we will not be able to do it. But because we're still within that five-year grant cycle, the Office of Head Start recommends that we request carryover monies from 1718. So this is time sensitive. Correct. Very time sensitive. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay. I'm still confused as to why they would allow us to carry over that type of money in two years back. Hey, I, think I see it's a blessing. I'm not going to. No, but I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, not, money. I'm just if, understanding. Yeah. If I may, when I uh, went to Chicago and met with uh, the Region 5 team, uh, Mr. Young stated that there were some people that did not encumber all of their grant dollars. So for the 1718 year, there were some uh, additional funds available and that because he knew of our needs and our commitment to Head Start, that we, they would afford us an opportunity to capture some of the dollars from the 1718 year and utilize those funds. They actually were very prescriptive in how this was written out for the carryover dollars. Okay. So you're saying, in other words, this money was never meant for Bussy. It was from other places. Nope. No. no. It was meant. So what happened is, so if you remember in 1718, we took the teachers from district employees to contractual employees. Correct. As a right. result of that, there was, an, a, there was a big saving. So we did a budget revision in for the 2017-18 grant year. Head Start then approved it and sent it to us in June. We had a 30-day window. We couldn't spend that money. So what happens is when you don't spend it, it goes back to Head Start. Right. So it's still in a, in a pot because it's in that five-year grant cycle. Mm -hmm. And so they are going to allow us that carryover money that we did not spend, they're going to allow us to request to use that yeah. money for the roof. Okay. Yeah. To get it back. Okay. All right. Okay. Any, any other comments or questions? Thank you, Ms. Hill. Thank you. <coughs> hmm? I'm to you to me. Oh, I'll, absolutely. <laughs> okay. I move that the board open and approve report 57-133 and 57-135. Or it's been properly moved. Oh, did you say open and approve? Yep. It's. <clears throat> It's been properly moved and seconded to open reports 57-133 and report 57-135. Any discussion? Hearing none, mm. Treasurer Rice, please call for the vote. Trustee Charles? Yes. Trustee Joyce? Yes. Trustee Poole? Yes. Trustee Hicks? Yes. Trustee Robinson? Yes. Myself? Yes. Six. Unanimous. Motion carried. Uh, we're going to open report 57-136, Michigan High School Athletic Association Membership 2019-2020. So move. Or, well, I'm sorry. We don't, we don't need it. It was, it was just open for informational. Okay. But if you all want to split it, you know. I see. I'm cool. There's no physical impact. Well, no. there was a support. No, I think it provides a level of protection. All right. So okay. it's been properly moved and seconded to make this an actionable report. <laughs> Any discussion? Uh, Hearing none, all uh, please call for the vote. Trustee you know, Charles. Ms. Rice. There's no fiscal impact. <laughs> <laughs> I can come back. Please do. Thank you. Trustee Robinson. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Trustee Poole. Yes. Trustee Joyce. Yes. Trustee Hicks. Yes. Trustee Charles. Yes. Myself. Yes. Unanimous. Okay, we're going to open report 50, oh, motion carried. We're going to open report 57-137, MASB, membership 2019-2020. Mm -hmm. Are these still for information? Mm -hmm. I can flip them all action. Unless but, you choose other. Yeah. Oh, but it's right not now, like you were all, waiting for um, a motion to open. No, I'm looking for any, I'm looking for somebody to actually lead us into that or if there's any questions from the trustees. And we're talking 138. For, for MASB. 137. 137. 137. Thank you. 137. The MASB oh. membership <laughs> renewal. Page 27. Yeah. <coughs> I mean. A any discussion? I mean, pick yeah, I, I think we should renew it because they, they, we, we received an email from Brad Benassi uh, a week ago about new classes that can be taught right here in our district. So I think some of those classes he listed would be beneficial. Mm -hmm. So for all of us, especially. Uh, 
board governance and board procedures and what have you. So. I concur with Trustee Robinson. Um, we've more than gotten our value on oh, no that membership. Okay, so does the does the body want to flip this from informational to action <coughs> actionable? So if so, the chair will entertain a motion. I move that we open and approve report number fifty seven one thirty seven. Michigan Association of School Boards membership. 2019-2020. Support. Support. It's been properly moved in a second to open and approve report 57-137. Any discussion? Hear none. Please call for the vote. Treasurer Rice. Trustee Poole. Yes. Trustee Robinson. Yes. Trustee Joyce. Yes. Trustee Charles. Yes. Trustee Hicks. Yes. Myself. Yeah. Six. Uh, Motion carried. President Hicks, could yes. you? Uh, review that email we received from Rabbi Nass a couple weeks ago mm -hmm. and try to schedule some of those classes for our retreat in August? Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Absolutely. Um, <coughs> so, just making sure, does the board want to go through the rest of these as informational or do we want to do these actionable? Mm -hmm. We'll just take a look at the listing. Video I just want to make sure that I don't confuse. Most of them are all standard renewals or contract extensions. Mm -hmm. M1 studio. With the exception of S. With the exception of S. Of which one? Uh, S, letter S, the report oh. to amend the Appropriations Act. Okay, on this one for um, 57138, um, M1 studio, are they gonna have somebody to fix this? That's actually the cable channel that's causing the issue, not M1 Studios. So we're working with the cable network to get that correct. Okay, well, I thought he mentioned that it was Oakland Schools issue, and I asked him about it last month, and he said something about Oakland School needed to, um, I guess the survey that's coming from Oakland Schools to our thing is kind of outdated or something. Well, Mike is here, but I believe it's um, the cable network. Yeah, you know, the last we heard, uh, Ron was looking into the equipment that has to be replaced over one of the other buildings. So, unfortunately, not something we can control on that part of it. So, it's not. Then who controls it? Uh, it'd be the IT department. So, who? The IT department. Oh, the IT. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oakland oh, schools. I will follow oh, up with, who? with yeah, yeah. Ron. I'll yeah. follow up with yeah. Ron on that. Yeah, mm -hmm. if it's IT. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we've been aware of it, and it's unfortunate, but. He's looking into it from what we know. Okay, okay. thank yep. you. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, as mentioned, other than S, um, most of these are renewals or <coughs> typical things that we see at this time of the year. Do, do you want any clarity on any of these items or should we handle them all together as one collective action item? I'll give you a minute or two to yeah, review, see if there's anything you have questions on. That's okay. And then 57 one third on 40, it said mm -hmm. that the, the cost of the assessment will not exceed 70,000. The district has decreased NW, the number. NWEA? Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. De decreased the number to what? The uh, NWA MAP fees are determined, are based on the number of students that we have within the district. So at this time, if we maintain all of our students um, and don't add any additional students, that would be the most that it would cost. And what happens if we, if we have a student reduction? If we have a student September. reduction, the cost would go down. Okay. Uh, through the chair, I guess this would be to the treasurer. Um, is it safe to assume, and you know we really want to assume things, that all of these numbers have been vetted and is not going to put us over, in particular with the general fund? Right. We're in good, good shape. Because I was looking at uh, what, what bucket these were coming from, and most of them I saw were general fund. Mm -hmm. general fund. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Just, just, so just as a reminder, <clears throat> so I believe that the budget that we adopted 
factored in renewal, renewal of most of these items. Okay. Because this time of the year is our typical renewal. Mm -hmm. So I believe that the, through the superintendent, if there were something that were going to impact um, our proposed budget, that it would have been vetted or resolved prior to bringing to us. Right. That's the confidence that I have in the team. So don't let me down. <laughs> Any, any other questions on any item through us at this point? Um, with 150, it, it's been vetted or bumped up against the calendar in terms of holidays, you know, school district being closed versus us having meetings. That, that looks yes. good. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the chair would entertain a motion if there's no more discussion mm -hmm. to open and approve reports 57 dash, we did 138, we're in no, one room. We're on 138 now. Okay, so, so we want the chair will entertain a motion to open and approve report 57 dash 138 through report. 57-150. Could I get a little more information on 148? Graduation mm -hmm. Alliance? Yes, Graduation Alliance is the program that we used for the students that are not able to come into uh, Southfield Regional to take their courses. So they do the um, virtual courses with the students there. Okay. I'm, I move that we open and approve reports 57-138 through 57-150. Support. It's been properly moved and seconded to open and approve reports 57-138 through 57-1-50. Any additional discussion or questions? Hearing none, please call for the vote. Treasurer Rice. Trustee Charles? Yes. Trustee Joyce? Yes. Trustee Hicks? Yes. Trustee Poole? Yes. Trustee Robinson? Yes. Myself? Unanimous. Motion carried. The chair will entertain a motion to open and approve reports 57131 and report 57132. These were the items that Wes spoke to related to CloudLink renewal and IPPA clocks. I move we open and approve 57131 and 57132. Support. It's been properly moved and seconded to open and approve reports 57131 and 132. Any discussion? Hearing none, Treasurer Rice, please call for the vote. Trustee Joyce? Yes. Trustee Hicks? Yes. Trustee Poole? Yes. Trustee Charles? Yes. Mm. Myself? Yes. Trustee Robinson? Yes. Six. Mo yes. Thank you. Motion carried. We're going to open report 57-151, amend amendment to the 2018-2019 Appropriations Act. Yes. Uh, Board President, um, this is the final amendment to the 2018-2019 Appropriations Act. Um, all trustees should have that in their binder. And I asked Ms. Norris to pull up a slide that uh, Ms. Dankovich and I discussed earlier today. And I'm very proud to share with the, uh, the trustees and our community as a whole uh, how far we've come this school year. When I walked in the door approximately a year ago, there was a proposed budget on the table uh, from then interim superintendent where we were looking to spend $6.6 .6 million of our fund equity within the first week working uh, with the team, was able to get that number down to $4.3 million and very pleased to announce that through our continued effort throughout the year, we actually only used 26 of that uh, fund balance this year. So came in almost $4 million lower than what was projected this time last year. Any questions from trustees? Well, thank you from the community, obviously, uh, managing those dollars wisely. So I'll be pleased. 
Would the trustees want to flip this one over to approve it? It is time sensitive. Yeah. It is time sensitive? Yes, mm -hmm. ma'am. It has to be done by the end of this month. Yeah, and then right. Sure, but I was we curious, though, about the um, truth and taxation date, if that has any bearing on this portion. This is the amendment for a 2018-2019 budget. Right. Okay, so tax and... Uh, for, is for next for year. Next year. Right. Thank you. <clears throat> I move that the board open and approve Report 57151 for the amendment to the 2018 2019 Appropriations Act. Support. It's been properly moved and seconded to open and approve Report 57 151. Any additional discussion or questions? Would well, this budget include the, the new reorganization? No, that is for the uh, 1920 19, school year. Okay. <laughs> Majority of the amendment is to shore up the actuals for the end of the school, school semester. Correct. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or expenses through June 30 of 2019? Mm -hmm. Board Treasury, please call for the vote. Trustee Charles? Yes. Trustee Joyce? Yes. Trustee Poole? Yes. Trustee Hicks? Yes. Myself? Trustee Robinson? Um, You know, I, I'd like to, um, instead of bringing this to us like this, to actually have a study session on this prior to approving it, because right now we're just going through this, and um, it, it just kind of quick and quick and fast for me. Well, just as a reminder, Trustee Robinson, it was shared to all the trustees last week. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't have um, last week. We had the, the document in detail submitted to us via email for review and posing questions. Mm -hmm. While Trustee Robinson's thinking, um, I just, it was missed and I want the community to really love South of Post Schools the way we do. And that 14 million, that is no, that is nothing to scoff at whatsoever. I remember <coughs> just a handful of years ago where, um, you know, the, the, the saying was cutting to the, you know the meat oh, yeah. <laughs> still, still those years yeah and board <laughs> president yes. if I may uh, to your point uh, there is <coughs> current conversation and proposed bills being placed on the floor as we speak relative to the dissolution of districts they're trying to uh, recreate that process for <coughs> districts that do fall into deficit yep, yep. right in the harbor is one of them yeah but but to trustee Robinson's point I, I understand we, we we, we can have, going forward, a study session prior to requesting the amendment right. for year end. We've, <coughs> yeah, we've always had that, so, you know. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> you ready for me? Motion on the floor? Yes. Six. Zero unanimous. <coughs> Motion carried. Thank you all. Uh, committee reports. <coughs> You're a busy person today, Treasurer Rice. Okay. Definitely. We will start with the Finance Committee report. The Finance Committee meeting was held on May 28, 2019. Um, it was scheduled to start at 5.30. We opened, um, called it to order at 5.50. Uh, the roll call folks were in attendance. Uh, Dr. Green, Board President, um, Trustee Smith-Thomas, myself, as well as um, our Associate Superintendent of Administrative Services, Kate Dinkovich. No board matters. Um, we opened up with discussion items. We talked through the um, assessment of the bond issue and we're focus was on the uh, infrastructure assessment which is scheduled to be completed by June 30th 2019 we talked through the 2018 2019 budget amendment as well as preparation for budget development for the 2019 2020 school semester the operating millage there were two options proposed um, the ballot language there is a copy in your binder. The recommended option that we have, and I'll pause here, um, because it is in your binder if we want to have some discussion on it and what's being proposed. What do we have? Okay. Let's see. Okay. I don't see it in my binder. Okay, we may have to actually um, Board President, if I may, uh, Attorney Amanda Van Dusen is um, 
tentatively scheduled to come out next Tuesday. You may recall a board president asked that we keep all the Tuesdays open for the month of June, and that is one of the things that she plans to discuss next week. However, we can send that out electronically to everyone this uh, evening and afford them an opportunity to review it over the next seven days. Okay. Uh, so we will defer that one. Um, moving forward to administrative guidelines, we have a proposed guideline for student fundraising um, that was shared. Um, we can get that information out um, as well. Uh, the administrative guidelines for external support groups is currently um, in the process of being developed. Uh, we talked through or shared with us the superintendent recommendations for um, the items that were itemized on our previous internal control audit. And we ended with for the good of the order requesting for special meetings. We kind of heard that um, keeping some of our Tuesdays open during the month of June. Our next scheduled finance committee meeting is scheduled for June 25th, 2019. Uh, the meeting was adjourned at 6.24 p.m. I will jump over to our instructional quality committee report. Um, the committee met on May 28th, 2019. Um, opened up the meeting at 4.54 p.m. with the folks as part of roll call, Dr. Green, Tracy Smith-Thomas, myself, as well as our chief academic officer, Mr. Ricky Fountain. No board matters, um, discussion items. Uh, the primary discussion item was around um, policy 2605 for program and services accountability and evaluation. We have the policy um, outlined. What I would like to call to attention is what's in bold there. Um, the board shall fulfill this responsibility by establishing a means for the continued evaluation of results which shall be systematic and specific. <coughs> Without going through the entire policy, um, I have a call to the board's attention. We approved the utilization of the Michigan Department of Education program evaluation tool to evaluate district programs. Um, additionally, the board has approved for an evaluation cadence to be established. Uh, one of the excerpts here that's included is from the Michigan Department of Education was required to be evaluated as per the MDE. The requirement is to have completed one evidence-based um, program as part of that evaluation. And so the question is posed, um, does one evidence-based program annual um, evaluation meet or fulfill um, our board's responsibility of establishing a means for continued evaluation of uh, results? I'll we'll pause there before we move on to the other. really is a question to the, the board. We approved the tool, we approved um, a cadence, and now um, the requirement from Michigan Department is only to evaluate one program a year. Okay. We feel that that's satisfactory. Yes. And not that we have to answer the question this evening, um, but it is an open question to the board. Mm -hmm. to, um, Treasurer Rice, uh, you may also want to mention that there is a modified version of that um, program evaluation tool as well. While the Michigan Department of Education recommends that we complete the full evaluation for one program, there is a uh, condensed version if you so desire that we use that for all other programming. Okay. So in our previous um, committee report, you guys were provided a copy of the um, program evaluation tool from the, Mich the MDE. Uh, and I'm not for certain if that other condensed version was included in there for that. So we may want to get that. Mm, I thought it was, but we, we'll oh. send out another copy. Okay. All right. Um, as we consider that. The second portion of the committee meeting was uh, um, focused around policy 2623 for student assessment. Um, calling to the board's attention, um, the Board of Education may in compliance with the law and the rules of the State Board of Education assess student achievement and needs in targeted subject areas in the order to determine the progress of students and make necessary board actions to assist them in attaining district goals. Um, another call out, the superintendent or des designee shall develop and present to the board a schedule of testing and assessment that includes a number of different things. The drafted um, student assessment um, calendar as well as a testing schedule is included um, in the board's binder for review. Um, please note that it is in draft um, form at this time, but we did want to provide a copy to the board as it's um, under development and would be in compliance with our policy that was revised back on, I want to say, April mm -hmm. 2018. Good. 
All right. Um, finishing up with that, our uh, instructional quality committee report is presented to the board today. Uh, for the good of the order, um, an excerpt from our 2010 curriculum development as um, educational leader of the district, the superintendent shall be responsible to the board for the development and evaluation of curriculum and the preparation of courses of study. Uh, the superintendent shall make progress reports to the board periodically. And then finally, a proposed draft guide of the curriculum for grades kindergarten through eighth grade is provided for review. So within your binder, um, Dr. Green talked about um, the drafted curriculum guide for kindergarten through eighth grade. Um, I think she also spoke about the others being developed for the high school for the start of um, the school semester coming um, soon. So you have a copy of that for your review as well. Uh, the, our next meeting is scheduled for June 25th, 2019, and the meeting was adjourned at 5.45. Thank you, Board Treasurer. Any questions on either report from trustees? <clears throat> Hearing none, we're going to transition to the bill disbursement report. Yes, sir. Ms. Dankovich, if you would join us at the podium this evening for the bill disbursement. Thank you, Dr. Green. Um, since our last regular board meeting, the um, district has expended $9 million. <coughs> um, this has been in the form of payrolls. Um, we had two payrolls since that time period, totaling $3.4 million. We also had um, two uh, check runs that um, were issued totaling $3.6 million, and the board was given um, detailed check registers um, of those disbursements. And then there were also payments um, that are made by wire or an ACH, um, totaling nearly $2 million. Additionally, the board, in your board materials, you have a budget to action report for um, through May, the end of May, should you have any questions, but that kind of wraps together the disbursements and also in line with our budgets. Any questions from trustees? I do, but I'm, I'm going to hold it. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Dankovich. Oh, yeah, just I want to make one other just comment. Um, on the bussy roof, none of those dollars came out of general fund. It's all in your capital projects fund. Um, so you can see that on your report. The projects are detailed there, okay? Thank you. Great. Thanks. Public, public participation. If you wish to address the board regarding a school-related issue that has not yet been resolved by school administration, please submit a comment card immediately. <coughs> Comments are limited to three minutes per individual. As a matter of fairness, speakers with complaints against individuals are asked not to mention persons by name. Complaints concerning employees pursuing board policy 9130 should be brought to the attention of school principals or other administrators before coming to the Board of Education. Your cooperation is appreciated. We have a comment card from Ms. Vanessa Solomon. Please come to the podium and state your name and address. Vanessa Solomon, 21405 Constitution, Southfield, Michigan, 48076. Um, I'm here because on June 2nd, my son was one of the graduates from uh, Southfield A&T and it was a horrible graduation. As a parent, you know, I'd spent 13 years of my son being um, in education here and I couldn't hear his name called. You couldn't hear any of the male's names called at SAT. And that was a horrible experience. I had his grandparents from Florida here and you couldn't hear them. And you, although they switched um, different speakers for the, on the male side, you still couldn't hear regardless of who the speaker was, whether it was male or female. Um, you could hear all the females' names, and I don't know if it was an issue with the mic or whether, I don't know what was going on over there, but you couldn't hear it. Um, and the other issue that I had was um, Southfield A&T students were instructed to be there two hours early. They had to be there by one. Um, and as a parent, I was there with my son at one o'clock, and we weren't allowed to be let in until after 2.30. And we were told that we would be let in at 2, um, but that didn't happen, I guess, because the other graduation ran over, whatever the case was. Um, and Southfield a and students were told that they could not decorate their caps. And many of the students that walked by me from university had their hat caps decorated. Um, so I'm here today to make sure that in the future, as you're looking at a 
venue for next year, you don't consider Aretha Franklin Amphitheater, or at least you, you will do a sound check and check that out because that was a, just a horrible experience. Also, I'm asking that all the students be treated fairly, that whatever is good for one school is good for the other. Um, because those students didn't have to be there but 45 minutes ahead of time. We had to be there two hours ahead of time. So I'm asking that you consider those things as you move forward with graduations um, so that all the students are treated fairly. So that's all. Thank you, Ms. Solomons. <clears throat> so echoing some of the comments that you've, or things that you've cited, as well as some of the things that trustees mentioned earlier on today, the uh, superintendent has taken on an action item to identify lessons learned from the past graduation. And it's gonna be given to her team in determining next steps for future graduations. Yes. Board President, I actually have an update um, on that, not to respond to the parent, um, to the public comment. However, the correspondence that was sent from the district level regarding the students not decorating their caps and the appropriate uh, behaviors and attire was uniform throughout the entire district. Um, furthermore, we did not only compile a list of lessons learned from this graduation, we drafted a three-page correspondence to the management team of the Aretha Franklin Amphitheater. I actually just received an email back from the management team literally five minutes ago, which uh, states that the senior management was not aware that their uh, employees were acting in this manner. And I know that Mr. Beebe personally met with the technicians to do a sound check in between the two graduations. So according to senior management, they were not aware and they are going to address these things on tomorrow and I expect a follow up from them on tomorrow. However, there are a number of things that we plan to do differently next year to ensure that all of our students have a wonderful experience at the graduation. Anything from trustees? Hearing none, for the good of the order, anything from trustees? Yes. yes, Trustee Joyce. Yes, I had the wonderful pleasure of attending my granddaughter's commencement at uh, uh, Aretha Franklin uh, Amphitheater <clears throat> this past Sunday. So I had the opportunity to sit in the audience. Sound system was terrible. Do you hear me? I say terrible. Couldn't hear nothing, couldn't understand nothing. Destiny couldn't understand it. I couldn't understand it. I asked other people, to, could they understand it? It was bad. The other thing was the seats were rusty, badly. Sad part for me is that when I got up, some of the white and, and the rust from the seat was in my, on my suit. Mm -hmm. So I hope I can get it out, mm -hmm. <laughs> okay? So I just wanna let you know that that's what I saw from a board member on the stage one Sunday and then as a board member not being a board member but witnessing my granddaughter uh, graduating that it was it was horrible so I just wanted to sh share my perspective from from the other end as a grandparent sitting in the audience and hearing everybody saying they was they, they were they were not pleased by what they was what they seen and what they witnessed at, at that amphitheater so, that's it any other comments or concerns? Hearing none, future meetings, Tuesday, June 25th, 2019, 6.30 p.m., special board meeting slash study session. Meeting adjourned at 8.40. All right. Yeah.